Hey everyone, Joel Attender here. I want to share with you right now what you can expect as a member of Laminate University. And what I mean is I have a screencast here. Now this is called an installation blueprint. And what I do is I go through your drawing that you would share with me and I'll answer questions for you. I show you how to do your layout. I walk you through your entire installation. And then if you have questions throughout the time that you are doing your installation, you can share pics with me, short videos, anything that you'd want and we can walk through those things whether it be your picker picks that you share or, or again on your blueprint so it really is a helpful tool to be able to do this i want to show you what this is like so here let's watch so we have a pretty simple layout here where we are going to install plank throughout this entire area what we have here is a kitchen area here's a big dining room we're into the living room right here this is stairs going down so this actually is not part of that right here but that's the stairs going down and this is actually a bedroom with two big closets one of them is a walk-in closet over here the other one here is just a big closet with a couple of sliding doors now this is another bedroom and then here's a bathroom with a vanity right here some sort of a clo cabinet closet and then this is the shower so pretty basic now they want to install this and not have transitions anywhere throughout the house so looking at this with the plank direction we're kind of thinking that we'd run this east and west so the plank would be running east and west down this long hallway here plus in these bigger rooms it's going to look nice to run it east and west and we're talking about the top of the drawing being north here obviously now this this could be changed if you don't want to run it east and west if this was yours you sure wouldn't have to i'm just suggesting to you what i would do i like to not have the plank go the short way down the hall but sometimes it doesn't always work either but anyway this is what we are going to go off of and so then i'm going to try to base this layout off of there so now what we would do next is we'd measure this hallway the width of this hallway and we're just going to use examples here of my numbers that i'm going to plug in just to give you examples now obviously you'd want to plug in your numbers here and if you want to offer some of these during your installation blueprint you sure can and i can help you through those different situations but let's just say that this hallway is four feet wide so if we measure this hallway at four feet and we divide that by two we're coming up with 24 inches here and so what we want to do is we want to have 10 planks actually i'm going to move that over to here we want to have 10 planks laid out that we're going to use to go off of to see where this plank is going to fall in the house and then we'll also use this these 10 planks to come up with some sort of a cheater a cheat sheet to be able to transfer some lines around the house so if we have planks here that are seven inches wide and we are 24 inches right here is so all we would do is just measure across these planks to see where 24 inches would land and so if i have uh, if i measure the three planks at seven inches each 24 inches is going to land right and pretty close to the center of another plank so that's actually going to look nice now what i'm looking for when i'm talking about layout here is i'm trying to end the plank in these doors it's just going to make it a lot easier for these planks to end in these doors somewhere so that we don't have to wrap a plank around both sides of the door okay it's going to be a lot easier to get around these door jams doing it where we would just end it here and then be able to move on so that's kind of the other reason why i like to start in a hallway it's just going to make your installation go a lot smoother especially if you don't want to use transitions and so we could move this line over to get a different measurement to see and if we did that we'd want to move that over a half a plank and so we're going to move this over a half a plank mine was seven inches so we moved that over three and a half inches now you can move it over on either side of these line either side of this line doesn't matter and we are going to come up with 24 minus three and a half that's 20 and a half inches now that we're looking at so if we measure across this plank 20 and a half inches we're going to actually have almost a full plank right there then in this hallway now that's not bad i don't like that or i don't mind that so i think that might be actually what we're going to go with here to have a nice size piece on both sides so that would mean that both sides would have that almost full piece now 
I just want to point out a couple of videos to you. Now, if we go to my the Laminate University here, now if you pan down to where you should start and why, you can click on that, and that'll bring you into my videos about where to start and why. So you can, we've already determined direction and which room we're going to start in. I'll go through that in a minute, but this is going to walk you through these three videos, three, four, and five are going to walk you through exactly what we're talking about right now. So that can explain things to you a little better. Now we're going to go with the 20 and a half inches here. So I'd want to measure from here, somewhere in here. Let's get this measurement out here a little bit off of this wall. So we'd measure out 20 and a half inches on this side. And then we'd measure somewhere down here the 20 and a half inches and make a mark in the floor. Our goal is to snap a line way out here. That's going to be kind of hard to do that and run that over both those marks and get that line snapped way out here. Now what we can do is we can take a dry string. Okay, this is a string line. It's not going to have any chalk on it. And so what we want to do is we want to put, we want to use this to stretch across the room so that we can get that other mark in the floor. And the reason why we're going to use the dry string is because it doesn't leave chalk. And so if you take a screw and you put that screw right inside this mark right here on the end, right in the center of it, just put a screw in there right through the floor and leave some of it out. Maybe leave about an inch out and you can take a loop at the end of this dry string and just hook it on. Okay, so it's going to swivel off of that screw for you. And so that is going to help us be able to extend this line all the way down here without leaving any chalk on the floor. So I want to do that, hook it on this screw, extend my chalk line or my string line way out here, move it back and forth until it gets on that line, and then just slide my marker underneath this line down here to be able to make a mark in the floor. Now we'd have this line down here. I'm going to try to make it so that it's right, but obviously you would make this right. But we're going to snap that line all the way across. Now I'm going to back up on this and make that nice and pretty because because I want you to kind of get the gist of it that you're supposed to have it nice and perfect. All right, so now we have this line in here. Now what I would do is I would start my plank up here, and I would probably work this way with my plank, laying it east and west, working it all the way through all of these areas. Now you are going to have to work backwards somewhere, and what that is going to cause is you're going to work backwards in this area and this area. So now you have two rooms to work backwards in. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could start over here and work our way this way. And if we did that, then we're only going to have to work backwards in this room. Now, maybe it would be easier to only have to work backwards in this big room. Um, you do have to go through this room into this closet and into this closet. You would work in forward in this closet, but this one you would have to work backwards throughout pretty much most of that. So maybe it would be better to do our starting down here. Now I'm going to actually have it so that we do start down here because I think that it is going to be easier than having to work backwards through a bathroom and also through a main bedroom. No, not all backwards working is difficult. So you could probably not have to worry about that too much but i'm just letting you know what we're going to do is we're going to measure a certain amount of planks to get our starting place where we're going to be down here okay now this is where you're going to go to your 10 planks here so i want to start a row away from the wall at least one row now if you have vents in the floor and that one row is not going to be enough then i would pull it away two rows and then you can come back later on and put these in and so what we're going to do is we're going to start laying our rows out one row at least and what we want to do and what i want to talk to you about is all plank has a locking system on it it's both the it, it, so it's going to have the groove and it's going to have the tongue now not every plank is the same so the reason why I'm saying this is we want to have that tongue facing our starting wall, which is down here. So our groove is going to be on this side. We always work away from the groove. Now, depending on the manufacturer on the butt end of these, the groove could be on 
one side or the other. Not every plank is exactly the same. Some planks will have that groove on this side. Some will have it on this side. So you want to always work away from that groove. So what we want to do, let's just say that our plank, the groove is on this side, okay? And here is the tongue side. So we'd want to start down here with our plank. Now I would cut this first piece and then I would lay out this plank the rest of the way. Before I cut this piece down here though, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're straight the entire way. Like this plank is a certain amount of planks away from the wall, away from this line that we're starting off of and also leaving one row out. So how you would do that to get that measurement again is go back to your planks. So you want to measure from here to here. So that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to put one more in there. So we have 10. So I said my planks are seven, are seven inches. So if I measure from here to here, I should get 70 inches. Maybe it might not be though. The thing of it is, is that over the past few years and pretty much ever forever, really, Everybody who makes plank goes by the metric system. No one uses the American standard system. So it's difficult to make a cheat sheet here and just say if I multiply 10 times 7, my plank should be 70 inches then, right? Well, no, not necessarily because if you are even a 30 second difference on each of those planks or even less than that, which would have a number in the metric system, but we don't really have one that's easy to use here, right? you could go off in an inch and just 20 planks. So you don't want to do it like that. You just want to measure across your planks, make a cheat cheat here by doing that. So you're just going to measure the face of these planks. So 10 for me, I'm going to say is 70 inches, but so I'll take my, my, my tape measure now and stick it on the face again of this. We're not measuring the locking system. And I'm going to measure across again. Now, maybe when I get to it now, now maybe it's 140 and a 16th of an inch. Okay, I'd write that down. But anyway, that's how you're going to get your amount that you're looking at right here. So I'm going to say, just make it easy for us. And I'm going to say round numbers, but it's not going to be that easy for you. You'll actually have something strange, I'm sure. So let's say that I'm 20 planks away from this. Okay, from here to here, that's 140 inches. So I want to measure from this line down 140 inches. Do it again here, and then here, and then here. Get this plank kind of straight, and then I can mark and cut this piece right here. Do the same thing. I'd stagger these joints. Now this is a random stagger, so don't get too precise here. You're not trying to establish any kind of pattern. You're just trying to make sure that these butt joints don't line up at least not very often. Now, before I cut the piece again down here, I would measure all of this again and make sure that this is gonna be 19 planks away from me now. Now, once we get that established, now we'll do that again. We'll, we'll Before we cut this piece, we'll make sure we'll put these planks together, just like we have been, and then we will cut this piece after. Now, you have the three rows together. Now we're ready to start securing these three rows. Now what we want to do is measure from here to here and get this perfect now where it's supposed to be a certain amount of planks. So I'm just going to say that we're 20 planks away. Okay. That's 140 inches. So if I measure from here to here, I want it to be 140 inches, right? So I'm going to kind of get the whole thing somewhat straight. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start securing our floor. So I would put a board in here after I measured from here to here and made that 140 inches. Now I would do this on every seam. Okay. And, and then I'd come down here and I'd measure here. Once I got it to the 140, then I'd put a scrap in here and I'd secure this to the floor. And I'd just keep doing this all the way down. Now you're going to leave these in until the very end. Okay, and what you'd want to do now is I would bring you to a couple of videos that you should watch. So let's get back to the all videos here. Now, if you go and, and you 
want to watch how to secure a floor if you didn't really understand what I was doing there. We also would probably be good if you watched how to install the first few rows of plank. That's really going to help you out a lot there. Now, if you haven't watched some of these other videos that I'm going to go through here right now, you should really consider watching them. This one and this one, the basic measuring and cutting and installing and the advanced measuring, cutting and installing. Those two videos are going to give you all the nitty gritties about measuring using the cheater board. Also, just being able to... Um, different ways of putting plank together there's just a lot of things that you're going to learn from those videos so those would be some good ones for you to watch so now we're looking at moving along here and we're already going to be a pro by the time we get to this point with our plank now we're ready to go around this closet so what do we do to be able to get into this closet well what i would do first of all is i would snap a line in there so that we're going to be able to make it somewhat straight in here so what I would like to do is get a reference line in here somewhere. It doesn't need to be any kind of specific number of planks. It just needs to be a reference line. So I would just measure to make sure it gets clear up here. I'd just measure up. Maybe right here that would be 6 feet, right? Then measure up here again 6 feet. Now you can snap a line with your chalk line across those measurements. Now I'm going to make this prettier so that we made sure that we went across our marks, marks right. Now if you feel com comfortable about snapping that line past that mark right here in a couple feet, then go ahead and do that. If you feel like you need to do that dry string method to get this line in here, then I would do that too if you want. So now that we have this marked, we got to go around this door jam right here. So what I would do is I would take a plank and I would just put a scrap piece right on here. Now this doesn't have to line up with any of this. Just put a piece on here so that you have something to attach to. But now this next plank that you're going to put on here, I would make sure that this butt joint does not line up with it in this row. Okay? Because this plank is actually going to end up going right here where this temporary piece is. So now I would attach that to there I would extend it even cut this piece in and I would measure from here to this plank and make sure that it's the same distance down here from this line to the plank once you know that that's all straight now you can take your cheater board and mark this okay now we're ready to pull this out put it up bring it outside go outside and cut it and now you have your pieces cut for right here Okay, but what, what, what are you doing, Joe? I wasn't usually starting down here. I was starting down here working this way. Well, I, this would be a situation where I would work against the locking system now just to make it easier so that you can cut that jam, not have to worry about cutting short, and then work away from it. Okay, that's just a little trick that you can use. I will just show you the other way here. So if you started down here working your way here and you ended right here with your plank, now you couldn't put another plank in. So what you can do is you can line up a plank perfectly with this plank that you have in the floor here right now. Okay, make sure these butt joints line up perfectly. Now you can extend planks off of that. And maybe this will be easier. I do it both ways. I'm just trying to show you so that it's easy for you. But now you would want to still have your line here that we talked about. I took that out and I shouldn't have. We still had that line that we snapped. Now you would just take your cheater board and mark this. Okay? And just make sure it's straight with the line before you make any marks with that. Now you can take that out bring it outside, go cut it. Now this might be a tough spot for you to get it in there. I think that it's going to go in pretty easy for you just sliding it into that jam and then into place here. But if you need to plane and glue that joint to make it easy so it will go in there, then that's what you can do. And I'll show you the video you'd want to go and watch if you have not seen it. So I have a video here that is about how to install plank into difficult areas. Now it's going to teach you how to plane and glue a joint so that when you slide that plank in, right, so when you slide a plank into another plank, we usually have to stick it up at an angle. I'm going to actually bring this up on big screen here. You have to bring it up at an angle and then drop it down. 
And when you plane and glue it, you don't need to do that. You can just slide that plank right into place without having to lift it at all. Now, a lot of vinyl planks, you can just tap together in spots like that, and it'll slide in and lock in so you don't have to plane and glue. You can try to put this in with the tapping block. But anyway, just wanted to tell you that might be a spot that might get a little more difficult for you. All right, so now all of this is going to go pretty easy. Let's get you going down the hall. So now we have our plank up to this point right now. And we're ready to go down the hall. So I want to talk to you about this to make it really simple for you. Now we have our line already snapped down the hall. That's going to be our reference line. So now we can't go any further because it'll hit this wall. So what we're going to do then is, again, we're going to take a plank and we're going to put it perfectly lined up with this one. Now we're going to extend this plank all the way down the hall. And before you make your final cut down here, on this last piece, we're going to make sure it's straight. So just extend it all the way down. Measure where we're connected to all this plank is all done already, right? So we want to measure from here where we know that we're straight with this line. So measure what the distance is from here to here. Let's say it's a foot. Go down and measure from the line to the plank all the way down and get it a foot. Now you'd take your cheater board and you would mark all of this plank. Okay, mark all of it. Because all of this right here is going to move down into here now. So you went and marked it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out we're going to bring it outside and now we're going to bring it back in and we're going to install it and what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how we're going to secure this now because there's door jams involved in the hallways i like to put that plank in where a lot of times i like to do temporary pieces like this but not in in hallways we want to have that plank up against the wall. Now let's say that this is the, against the wall right here. So I want to drill a hole through the plank, a pilot hole, that we're going to stick a screw into. Now this pilot hole needs to be about the same size as your screw, maybe a little smaller so that you could still thread through it, okay? And the reason why is because you don't want it to be loose because you don't want this to move. And so then what you can do even is you can, to protect it, you're trying to get against the wall so the base is going to cover this, but not all the time is that going to happen, okay? So what you can do if you make a nice clean hole, you can fill it with wood filler so it won't show, okay? But another thing you can do is you can just use a small scrap piece and drill through that and then through the plank and into the subfloor just a little and then put your screw in. Now if you're on concrete, doing this method is going to require a hammer drill and then you could use tapcon screws, okay? Now if you have a lot of a lot of situations like this you're gonna maybe want to invest in a hammer drill and you can go to harbor freight tools and get one for pretty cheap now if you're on concrete these right here you can glue with a glue now i have um some other info on that if you need it let me know but i'm going to show you real quick we're just going to go to google here and i'm going to type in tap cons here okay now you can get some Tapcon screws from Home Depot. This they come in different. You can get the hex head right here. Um, you don't really need it to be too long. It can be the inch and a quarter even. It can be a little smaller than that. Or you can even get the ones that are just have the Phillips head in it. But the nice thing about these is that they also come at the drill the drill bit that you're going to need. So Tapcons are really nice. To work with i know i show different things inside securing the floor here but i'm just wanted to let you know and give you a little bit of a tidbit but we're going to want to make sure all of this is straight with this line all the way down and then once we do that then we can start putting those screws in on each one of these seams like i was telling you okay whoops that one's out a little bit but you got what i'm saying now right here because this is where we're going into a door and we're not doing this yet you can use a temporary scrap piece there but then down here again, you're going to have to use a screw. Okay, so you can see that this is really a valuable tool. I walk you through everything step by step. Now, I didn't show you the entire video because most of these videos can go for 45 minutes to an hour. And then you just make a timeline for yourself the first time you watch it to be able to just go back to those places inside the video 
when you get to that point in the installation and you have an issue. Now you can also continue, like I said, to share pics, ask questions throughout your installation while you're a member of Laminate University. And I will help you through those things through other screencasts. It's not just limited to one time or, or through, you know, just looking at your drawing, you can share a pic and I can certainly pull that up on the screen and we can talk about those things too. So it's really a valuable tool that I've implemented into Laminate University. Hey, I'd really like to coach you throughout your installation. Um, and if you do decide to join, I'll see you in there. Hey, I'm Joe Latender. God bless you and have a great day.